So um, welcome to the Marketing Optimist uh, Marketing Sandwich course. Um, today we're speaking to Carol Lane from Cat's Pajamas Productions. Um, I've known Carol for probably about three, four years actually, I think. Uh, mm -hmm. We both started off on the NatWest Business Accelerator, which was called Entrepreneurial Spark when we joined. That oh, got very confusing. Um, so yeah, so we've kind of gone on a bit of a journey together. I think we've been through some ups and downs together and quite a few drinks together at some point as well. I remember some uh, some messy events. Um, so Carol's got a really, really interesting uh, business. I know you've won some um, NatWest awards for entrepreneurship, um, but I'm not going to tell you all about Carol's business. That's what Carol's here to do. So Carol, over to you. If you could just tell us a little bit about you and your business, uh, and then we can start having a discussion. Sure. Well, I'm from Cats Pajamas Productions, as Richard said. Um, we provide entertainment to the elderly and disabled in the care home setting, um, trying to um, inspire people and stimulate the brain through music, theatre, dance, try to provide West End quality productions um, at a cost that anyone can afford. Um, it goes down really well, especially with people with dementia. You can really tap into that brain and bring, bring back memories that you didn't necessarily think would be there still. Um, and it's a pretty wonderful thing to do. I've been doing it since 2007, started up on my own and just expanded over the years. And I absolutely love what I do and I don't ever want it to end. Excellent. Um, so obviously what, what you do is, is, is vital work. I don't see how it could ever be considered anything but vital. Um, so obviously t tell, us a, tell us a bit about kind of, how did you, how did you get into all this? Cause it's, it's I, th I remember when I first met you and you described what you did and I was like, well, where, where, do, where does that come from? So tell us a little bit about your background and, 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 and why you ended up doing what you were doing. Sure, I've been a performer all my life, a, a, a jobbing actress and singer, and I ended up working for a company that took me into care homes and I fell in love with it. I realised that when I could see the reactions from people um, really enjoying the, the, the hour's entertainment, I thought I could do it better than some of the quality of what they were getting there. Um, so it became my aim to provide something really professional. Um, and that's where I, I just took off from there. I started in the local area where I was living at the time in Essex, going around Essex and London, Hertfordshire. Um, then I met my husband who was living in Leeds. So I started performing up in Yorkshire too. I also, uh, you can probably tell I'm from Scotland. I'm from Aberdeen. Really? <laughs> I would um, come up to Scotland and perform for the care homes up there. And then as I had children, I started hiring other people and um, getting into the rest of the UK. We still haven't made it to Northern Ireland yet, but that's still on the cards. Hopefully we'll get over there at some point, but we do, we cover the whole of Scotland, England and Wales now. Excellent. So obviously we, we, met, we, met, at the, we met at the NatWest hub in Leeds, um, when I think we were all a little bit frightened because there was a lot of kind of, you need to go up and pitch and, 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 and like, I think it was, for me, it was quite a dawning realization that, um, you, I was running the business, speaking to clients, but this was the bit where you had to kind of go up and actually talk about the business in front of other people. I remember that first time I actually fronted this out. I don't know if you were in the session that I was in, but I fronted it out and they kind of, everyone was there all really nervous. And she said, okay, so can somebody come and talk about the business? And I went, right, I'm doing it. And I got up and I stood and I walked to the front and I think I probably delivered the best pitch I'd ever done because I didn't think about it. And then after we'd gone through everyone else's pictures, so I remember one of the guys who was there um, said, that was brilliant. If that's the benchmark, this is going to be great. And I was thinking, oh God, I've just, won I've just been winging this. So I got up to the front and I did that. And I, then I think the pressure changed. I think the pressure came on when everyone else did it. And I realised how much better everyone else was because you were great. And there were some other people who were fantastic. And I was thinking, oh God. And then the nerves kind of kicked in. And I don't think I pitched anywhere near as good as that first time, all the time I was on the course. Um, so I, I'm interested in kind of your entrepreneurial, um, uh, story on how you, I hate that word. I can't even spell it most of the time, but I hate it myself. I don't like calling myself an entrepreneur. No, I, I never call myself an entrepreneur. Yeah. Yeah. I never call myself an entrepreneur, but it's a good way of describing it. And that's what they wanted us to be. 
So I'm interested on, on, on what your thoughts were from taking your initial business where you were doing what you were doing and I was in the same position and then being kind of confronted with that, all, all these energetic people who really wanted to make the business expand and how you coped and how did that affect you and, and did it, and just kind of what, what the journey did you go on? Well, I'm probably a bit like you. When I was first there, I was very nervous and I felt like a fish out of water. Let's face it, I've never seen myself as a businesswoman. I'm a performer who runs a business. So the business side has always been a lot trickier. And I saw all these people using jargon I had never heard before. I was nervous to put my hand up to say, yeah. what does that mean? But I realized when I, when I did get the gut to ask a question, I realized I wasn't being stupid. As they always say, the only stupid question is the one you don't ask. Yeah. So I was there to learn. And from that point on, I did learn and I wanted to soak in everything that I could. Um, and, but I still never really, the whole three years or whatever we were there, I never really felt like I was as good a business person as a lot yeah. of people there. Uh, although our team leaders and everything said, but you are, you're doing a great job and your business is going forward and upwards, whereas maybe some others weren't who talked a good game and, and looked like they were doing well. Yeah. Um, I just, I, I guess I've, I've never felt comfortable with the whole situation. Um, but I've learned a lot along the way and made some mistakes, but learned how to cope with them and to move on and, and make things better, how to, how to learn um, and, and carry on and never give up, basically. Yeah, I, I think a lot of us um, felt like that. Um, it's that imposter syndrome. I think it's that thing of, yeah, you seem to be exactly. all right, but you, you expect somebody to jump out, of the, jump out of the cupboard and go, ha ha, yeah. you don't really know what you're doing and we found you out. Um, yeah. And I think equally, a lot of the other people who are on the course as well, I think even those who, uh, and it, there's probably some who, who, we, who we both kind of joined up and went, yeah, they really know what they're doing. I think after kind of further inspection and chatting to those people, you soon realise over a few glasses of wine that they don't know what they're doing either. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, I, and I think that's a perception for people who want to start a business that they go, yeah, but I don't know what I'm doing. Well, actually, in my experience, most people don't know what they're doing and they just kind of try things and learn and pick things up by doing and, and then develop and then there we, here we are. Uh, I mean, my business has been going for four years now and I know you, you've been going a lot longer. You suddenly go, well, actually, I must know what I'm doing because I'm still here and we're still expanding or we're still growing. Yeah. So it's, it's, I think it's an interesting, interesting point for people who want to start a business that it's not all about, you don't have to have everything in line you just need a you need a good idea yeah and it's the good idea and then the conviction to push through on that good idea is what what i think separates people who make it from people who kind of do it and then lose a bit of interest and it falls over and being willing to listen to others as well you don't necessarily have to take everybody's advice but it's good to listen because sometimes there can be some valuable little snippets in there absolutely yeah absolutely i think and i think that was one of the benefits of being on the NatWest. Uh, course was the fact and this is the bit I really loved was the fact that everyone was kind of all there and you could ask somebody about I don't know finance or getting a loan or hiring somebody or how does this technology work or I've got this thing from the VAT and I haven't got a clue what to do and people go oh, well actually I know and that support network was vital yeah the other thing I loved about the accelerator program is the inspiration seeing other yeah. people doing well inspires me to want to do better and also being held to account having my monthly meetings with, with yeah. my group and, and and just knowing that I have to have achieved something in that month it, it yeah. just spurs you on to, to do more yeah no absolutely I think it is there's that that loneliness of, of running a business when it at the point when it is just you that point of going well I don't know who, who's who's going to celebrate with me who's going to commiserate with me yeah. who's going to say pull yourself together and who's going to go you deserve a drink that, that, that person's not there so i think that that is why that's really valuable and that's that's why i hung around for, for as long as i did um yeah. because it, I, I got just like you i got a lot out of that yeah absolutely i didn't want to be kicked off the program no me either <laughs> our time was done we done exactly we're allowed to yeah yeah you can't, we, we, we couldn't we couldn't run around forever but yeah no I, I, it was completely the same feeling for me so I remember one of the last times we spoke, you had ambitions to kind of um, to franchise. Yeah. 
how Cat's pajamas was going to work. So I, ge I guess just stepping back again, what, what was your thought process behind that? What did you plan to do with that? Where did it get? Yeah, this was something I had never thought of. I, when I first started the programme, I thought, no, a franchise would never work because um, someone mentioned it to me. I thought, no, 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 I need full control. I couldn't have other people running their own part of the business. Um, but then as time went on, more people mentioned it to me and, and ways that, that I could keep the control. And I realized it was actually probably a good idea because things were getting really difficult for me to control everything on my own. And it seemed a natural progression. So yeah, I thought long and hard about it and thought it was the right thing to do. So uh, I'm lucky that one of the girls that, that's performed for Cat's Pajamas for goodness, for a long time, um, since 2011, um, she loved working for the company. She loved working with me. Um, and she decided to take on the first franchise. So she has now been operating for a year and a half um, solely on her own. That's um, Rochelle Ayres. Yeah. And um, she's shown that you, like, like me, you can be a mother, you can have your own business and you can succeed. She's gone from strength to strength until lately, but we'll get on to that. Yeah. <laughs> sure. um, but yeah, she's done a grand job. However, I haven't yet secured anyone else um there's been it's been difficult to find the right people the, mm -hmm. the usual places that you advertise for franchisees it seems are not the right place to find yeah. performers that want to take on their own business so we've struggled to find the right place to to find people and um we also had a setback again because of current situations we we've sort of lost uh, a good chunk of time when we we had found places we we wanted to advertise and it wasn't the right time to do it this year because yeah. uh, no one's going to invest at the moment when there's no work for them yeah i, I mean yeah understandable um because i guess for from a franchise point of view i mean my my limited experience of those kind of things is that um they have there's lots of franchise events or there used to be lots of franchise physical yeah. events but they were mainly for people who wanted to buy a mcdonald's or a some sort of more obvious franchise where they could just almost like buy the buy all the kit and go oh, here you are here it is you give us a chunk of money and effectively it runs itself whereas your franchise clearly you need to be whoever picks it up needs to be an artist straight off the bat because that's kind of how it works so yeah. I can I can understand that you you would have had it's 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 a, it's a niche to find a, yeah. a, well a, clearly a, a niche of a niche isn't it? Initially, um, they're going to be working on their own, so they're going to have to do all the performing and the business side. Once they build up their business, then they can start hiring other people. Um, but no one's going to want to come into it from scratch. Although everywhere in the country, we already have clients, so they're not actually coming into nothing. They will have yeah. something to work with from the beginning, which yeah. is unusual for a franchise as well. If you're starting a new franchise, then you've got to set it up with no customer base, but we already yeah. have a customer base um, all over the UK. So they can still already have some work there for them. Um, but yeah, it would make no sense for anyone to come in expecting to do the admin side, they're going to make no money initially yeah that. yeah, yeah that, that, that's why i don't have a franchise yeah <laughs> with <Yeah>. you because <laughs> I, I can't sing it you don't want me to sing and dance that's not going to work <laughs> <laughs> um so i guess what i'd like to talk about now is um i guess to, to the nuts and bolts of it all is um how covid's affected you because clearly your entire uh work is, is based on entering care homes and, and, ent and entertaining and, 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 and helping it and actually I, I always see what you do as almost like a part part of their part of their treatment support uh, yeah. because it's it, it's not it's kind of I don't you could probably explain what it is better but it, it's part of their care isn't it sure it, it's part of for their, their for the, yeah, it's part of that. Yeah. important to stimulate them, to, to keep them lively, to give them something to, to, to want to do. Um, and it can, it can be part of their whole activity programme. A couple of years ago, the CQC Care Quality Commission put in a rule that every care home, even if you only had one person living in a home, classing it as a care home, you had to provide an activities schedule and uh, 
and that can include all sorts of things, um, but it's about keeping them active. Um, and entertainment is a big part of that because it, it's been proven that, that it works so well. Lifting spirits, um, people keep that feeling with them for the rest of the day. So if you've had a good hour in the morning, um, even if you've got dementia and you don't remember what you've actually done, the feeling stays with you all day. Yeah. You're, you have a good day. You know what it's like yourself. If you wake up in a bad mood, you have a bad day. If yeah. you wake up in a good mood, you have a good day. Well, this is what we do. We lift those spirits and make people feel much better for the rest of the day. And if they don't have dementia, then they talk about these things for weeks to come. Still, I've got right. people that I, I did a show for a few weeks ago outside in the garden, and they're still talking about what a wonderful Excellent. Oh, that's lovely. So it's really important. But of course, COVID came. Um, we knew really early on, before the country went into lockdown, we were already getting cancellations. Um, and then lockdown came, of course, it was never going to happen. No one was going to have anybody for a long time. Um, care homes of course couldn't have visitors so friends and family couldn't come and they classed us as performers uh, in the in the same way we weren't allowed to come for quite a while slowly that improved and certain people who had a nice garden and good weather started having the odd show outdoors and they go down really really well um yeah. i'm doing next week um, but but many of them just don't have the facilities. Um, also, you're reliant on the weather. You don't want people sitting outdoors in the rain and the wind. Um, if they don't have the setup where people can see from the windows even, it won't work. We also tried to offer our services online, um, trying to pivot and, and go with the yeah. change. What can we do to, to, to keep out there um, when things are not letting us into to the homes? But not, not everyone can do that either. In fact, right. I've had nobody take us up on, on that. I had one who was going to, and then she ended up quitting her job for different reasons. Um, but they, they don't have the equipment, and a lot of the people who don't have the skills to, to do these kind of Zoom meetings, even yeah. though we still can talk them through it. There's also the problem that the elderly sat in front of a television, even you're, though you're doing a live show and you can talk to them like we're talking to each other, yeah. They, they just can't concentrate on a screen for an hour. Yeah. They, they, it doesn't hold their interest as much. So I'd say most people across the country um, don't want to get into that kind of situation. So it's either live in person or not at all. Yeah, because I, I, we were having a discussion about this beforehand, um, about about kind of, about, about cat's pyjamas and kind of, oh, could you do this? Because obviously we think like that, you, the same thoughts that you had. But I can see how, there's a difference because it's different to like me watching a video of you performing or, or, or a TV show or any other performance. Um, that's there kind of for, for kind of entertainment in a televisual kind of way. But you, the, the, a big part of what you add must be the, your physicality of being there. The fact that you're in the room and, and, it, and it's because I guess if somebody has got dementia or, or some other issue like that, um, if he's not a real person, they just kind of go, well, that's just on telly. And we can watch telly anytime yeah. and it's not it's not going to have the same impact yeah it's the interaction yeah. and even though we're not allowed i mean normally in, in normal times when we're in the room with them we really like holding hands and, and sitting on gentlemen's knees and, and yeah. giving them a hug giving them a kiss um th that physical interaction is fantastic but even while, when we're doing outdoor garden shows, you can still have a lot of interaction. Yeah. You can still go closer than, than where you, you start off. So they feel like you're and looking everyone in the eye, which yeah. you can't do when you're on a TV screen. Um, so it, it, it is still better being in a garden than it is being on television. But I would still prefer to be in the room and be able to get up close and personal. Yeah. And so, of the, of the shows that you that you're doing, how how what's what's the feeling you're getting back from the audience? You oh, mentioned that people are remembering it. So, 
especially because they haven't had any visitors, they've had no entertainment going on, they've not been able to even come and do activities together a lot of the time. The fact that they are outdoors in the garden or sitting upstairs at a window looking out with the windows yeah. open so they can hear, they are just so excited um, when I get there. They have such a good time and they go away singing and dancing back to their room. Oh, Absolutely adore it. That, that's 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 brilliant it's it's so it's so nice to hear because i think it's one of those things there's so many i mean we we're talking about just before we start the call so many kind of obviously covid is an awful situation and the things that are just changing all, all you really hear is the bad news yeah um so and and uh, again i'm surprised it's not something that's been talked about about the fact that entertainers like yourselves are, are allowed back into um care homes to kind of start lifting people's spirits and make people think feel a bit better about themselves even if it's yeah. limited and it's done in a different way and it's not quite how as it was but just yeah. little things that make a huge difference to people's lives it's so important yeah absolutely but it's still so sad that we've lost so much work throughout it i mean this year was actually meant to be the 75th anniversary of ve day yeah. and it just didn't happen we had so many bookings it was going to be like the best may and june that we'd probably ever had and they all just went um yeah. it was just dreadful it wasn't until the end of may that I started getting the odd booking back but still nothing like it, it, it was meant to be it's so so sad um, all these celebrations people had planned and and it, you know a big anniversary it, yeah yeah I, I, yeah I guess that's doubly doubly going a little bit as well because obviously unfortunately some of those people aren't going to see you know like the, the veterans or whatever who, who, who were seeing the 75th anniversary may not see the 76th so yeah, it's that's sad it's not even like you can kind of oh we'll, we'll do it next year and it'll be fine we can kind of have a bigger one because it's it might not it might not work yeah. um so so what what's your plan now now that you're seeing uh kind of a bit of a little bit of grass growing at the other side what, what what's your plan kind of going forward and how are you working with that because that, again it's, it's a moving landscape so i guess it's it's really tricky to know what to do it is and and it's it's very disheartening sometimes because even when you know you can do such a good job even in the current situation not everyone is sort of open to to the options um it's depressing um but just trying to stay positive and 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 just seeing it out we've just got to wait it out and just keep keeping in touch with clients letting them know that we're still here how are they doing are they all right um, do they want any entertainment offering it up but not being forceful yeah. um, that's certainly not the way we've ever dealt with things either we're not pushy um, but but just try to say yeah we're still here um, if you want us and hopefully when things um, calm down and we get back to normality then hopefully they will still be there and, and, and want us back um, but I, I don't really know if there's a, a, a lot more that I can do at the moment yeah that's that's sobering isn't it um because there is there, there's a there's just a physical limit to what you can do you said that the, the tv or remote because this is this, a, a lot of our clients we have kind of transitioned them to remote so we've got uh, a client who uh does uh pilates classes mm -hmm. so she could quite easily transfer that to to doing it to remote um we've got a, an angel investor client who who we helped to transfer to doing their angel investor meetings their pitch meetings via zoom because that's that works straight away um, I've I've changed my training course, which I used to do physically in a room, to be to be up via Zoom. It works fine, but that's because a talking head and maybe some slides works fine. Um, you've got a completely different. It's just a completely different issue, isn't it? Yeah. Um, I so have to say one thing that I thought about um, early on in lockdown, but changed my mind very quickly was I'd thought about doing shows on youtube and things but actually that would be detrimental to the business because if they've got it there to put on their television anytime they want they may stop it, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. you're shooting yourself in the foot if you do that and there are a lot of people out there who have been doing that or have been offering free shows and that's actually taking uh, the jobs away from the people who 
normally do get paid for it. Um, yeah. there's, in the care home entertainers community, there, there's quite a lot of talk about these people offering free shows. It's not a good thing because people will use you just now because they're getting a free show, but they may not use you in future. If you say you're going to start charging, they will go, no, you gave us it for free before. Yeah. Um, so it's a very difficult thing. Although I wanted to, to do that kind, kind of thing, doing, doing YouTube, doing um, Facebook Lives, whatever, it, it's not the sensible option. Yeah, no, I'll get that. At this point, I think I'm going to bring in Chris. Are you, are you there, Chris? And Hello. The reason I'm going to bring Chris in is because I don't know if, I don't know if, you, if you and Chris have ever talked, Carl, but Chris, before he started working for the Market Optimist, um, well, I'll say he still is, actually, before, before I said before, he still is. Um, is a is a performer, so he's a is a is a musician. So he's gonna have, and he's not the same kind of same kind of performer, obviously, but similar kind of things. So so Chris, what from from everything that Carol said, I guess more on the performance and, and how that's working. Sure. Have you got any, have you got any thoughts? Anything you'd like to ask Carol? Well, I mean, I so I was I've been um, sort of a, a a touring musician since I was preteen, really. Um, I'm 28 now. Um, and I stopped performing when I started working for Richard. I, I wanted to leave the live thing behind and be a recording artist. And I'm very happy doing that now, but I wouldn't be able to make my living doing that. Um, so it had to be the live stuff. And one thing that I think we can, we can all be very thankful of is that when this is all eased away and things are a little better, there will be a dying need for music, both in your world and in and in the touring, out you know, in the bars and clubs and whatever. Um, there will always be that need for music, and I mean, I'm I'm seeing it with the people that used to come and see me play. You know, these people are simply like chomping at the bit to get out to see shows again. And I think, um, again, this isn't uh, just just to sort of agree with you. My grandma has uh, Alzheimer's. Um, and because of the kind of music I used to play, it was all kind of 1920s and 30s jazz. Mm -hmm. It amazed me because she was probably only born around then. But what's yeah. amazing is a lady who's now in a home, so she was quite extreme at the time. But I had on Joe Stafford, You Belong to Me, from the 50s, and she knew every line of that song. And then I put on Billie Holiday from the 30s, and she knew every line of that song. And it's like, she can't remember, she can't tell you what she had for breakfast. Yeah but that music resonates somewhere in them. Yeah. And it's amazing, they just light up. So what you do is an amazing thing. And I think what we can, what we can safely say is that it will always be something that is needed. I absolutely agree. And with the quality that you do it at, you know, it's all gonna be fine. You know what I mean? It's just right now, it's a tough time, but you know, that you, you will always be needed. So uh, that's, a, that's a lovely thing, I guess. Thank you. What a lovely thing to say. But you're absolutely right. I'm, I'm, I'm glad you've seen it for yourself, how incredible it is. Yeah, definitely. Very strong. And, he, that, and I mean, I'm, I'm going off the fact that Richard's already told me the kind of the kind of music that you perform as well. And, yeah. you know, there's something very special about that music generally, because, you know, I said to Richard, I was playing in jazz clubs to people who were there to hear 30s jazz music done a bit modern. And that's what I was doing. <clears throat> but then at the same time, I was playing to basements of students and they were, you know, sort of throwing their fists in the air to songs that were recorded by Al Jolson. Do you know yeah. what I mean? It's like, this is, this is madness, but there's something in that music that is very special. And um, yeah, I think live music will be fine when we can, when we can make it again. Yeah. You know, that, in all I, the, yeah. It might take some time, but we'll get yeah. there. Again. Yeah, absolutely. That's why I'm not giving up. That's yeah. why I'm not taking right, up right. a job and, and you know, leaving my business behind. I am still striving to make this business work. That's true because as well, what, what I would reflect on from earlier, which was great to hear because you know, you've know you met musicians just as I have who can be incredibly, incredibly talented, but you just go, you could never run a business. Yeah. It's a special musician who can, you know, who's, an, who's a great artist and someone who can also run a, run a great business that's a, a a special kind of person who can do that um but yeah I, I think it's it's we're all we're all safe and i think you know it, it would be a real mistake to turn to turn you back on it because and like you said you're not going to and that's brilliant 
but what I mean is because it's not any it's not everyone who can do what you do there are a lot of there are a lot of artists out there and people can sing yeah but to to be able to do the whole thing and successfully um it's it's rare and special so hang hang tight and it'll be there soon I guess thank you yeah <laughs> excellent okay well um I guess is there, is there anything is there anything special that you'd like to mention, Cal? Have you got anything that you'd like any, any shows coming up? Anything you want us to push? Well, well, while we've got a screen. Well, you can't really push my shows because they're all private. I can't. Well. <laughs> <laughs> coming to them but no i'm currently in scotland actually at the moment it's the um kids summer holidays so we've come up to my parents Very nice. for a month um so we've moved in we're not just on holiday we've moved in for a month yeah. and yeah i'm performing up here so next week i've got a few around scotland i think i'm in inverness i'm in Porfer, i'm in edinburgh I'm oh, going that's on. fantastic so it's nice to see a bit of the country and as I always say, put smiles on people's faces. Absolutely. That's, what it's all about. That's fantastic. Well, um, thank you so much, Carol. Um, it, 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 as always, you're really inspiring. Every, man, we've always had really good chats before, but I, I always take a, a lot of inspiration away from, from what you do because you're, uh, what you do um, makes a real difference to people. It's not just a it's not just a, I'm not just selling widgets. I'm not selling bolts and nuts and bolts or, or commodities or whatever else you could sell, you know, but that lots of people get, get by on. Um, I think what you do just adds so much to, to the community. It's, 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 you should be paid by the government as far as I'm concerned. It should be just kind of, yeah. it, it should just be there. It shouldn't, it, it, it should be just part of the NHS. It should just it be, should. It that's should. what you get to people it should be prescribed yeah absolutely that's the word i was looking for it should be <laughs> prescribed because it's um i don't know it's it, the nhs is, is is a marvelous institution and it's great for obviously healing people and, and giving out drugs and all these other things but i think there's a there's a bigger thing that the humans humans need a bigger thing which involves much more than just a medical intervention and i think yeah. what you do adds to people's mental health in a in a way that there's no other way of doing it it certainly I mean. does i mean yeah. the statistics show it the average um length of a stay in a care home i think is three years um but if you keep them happy and stimulated they will live a longer happier life and surely oh, that is important and it's also absolutely. great for the staff too the staff morale when you're singing songs and having a good time and they start singing yeah. and dancing then it's great for everyone the, the the staff and the residents can get together and get to know each other better as well so it, yeah. it's moving all around excellent well i, I hope i hope i hope let's, let's keep in touch because I, I hope everything works out for you because it, it sounds like there are there are chinks of light and thing and things are starting to improve and open up and and i, I hope it gets back to how it how it was for you uh, because like i say i think it's vital always keep a positive mind absolutely yeah always the optimist that's what we that's what we, that's what we do at our end <laughs> so th thanks thanks a lot carol and and uh, enjoy the rest of your day and uh, we'll speak to you soon Cheers. Thank you very much.